create this experience like as much as I can. An 85 inch television? That'd be fun. It would be fun. Where where would you put it? I have a right there. I have a 55 inch right there. And I'm, I took my tape measure and went, holy shit. <laughs> like it went 30 <laughs> inches bigger than this across. Yeah, that's it awesome. It wouldn't fit on the table. Do you have a sound system as well? I know. Yes, sort of. It was so depressing now to watch uh, Greyhound on my laptop. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> wow, oh, this looks awesome. Uh, yeah, it's so away, frustrating. It if uh, you look closer, it looks bigger. Uh, it fills your, your, your field of vision. <laughs> well, this is the introduction. What is up, my gaggle of geeks? We're already live. We've been talking our ears off, and nobody even knew. What? Yes. <laughs> well that we 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 knew we were putting it out or we didn't know whatever i am very happy to have my guests here you you've already heard us talking about tvs and such um he is the critic for fox 13 and give it up for richard bonaducci <laughs> how's it going man too much these days but yeah <laughs> I think we're all still critics at heart. Like anytime oh, we see a comment oh, about something I'm that we disagree with, we suddenly oh, put yeah. our academic cap on. Critical. I haven't said anything about your hair. You know, I'm just trying to hold it back. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, some people are already hiding their hair for some reason. It's our co-host, Chaz. How's it going, man? Uh, I'm, I'm hiding my hair because I have like a uh, sideshow bob hair going on due to quarantine. I wish I had that. Oh no. Yeah, I, I've been meaning to get it cut, but then, you know, I don't trust her salons, so. I'll do it. <laughs> well, while the three of us are talking about hair, we have somebody here that actually is, is ready to talk movies. And, and you know her from Rachel <laughs> Reviews. It's Rachel, how's it going? Hey! <laughs> so many different sound effects. How's it been? It's been a while since, honestly, I, me and Chaz just saw each other to uh, go on a hike and talk about maybe filming something, but I haven't seen Rich, Richard or Rachel in forever. How I have know. you guys been? What What is life like for you? Are you safe? Yes, I've been very safe. I, I, I've been very, very quarantined. Uh, I, uh, I actually had a little bit of a health scare in uh, April with my blood pressure uh going up and I, so i've been dealing with that and trying to kind of get on some medication and figuring things out and so it's been it's been an interesting time a challenging time but uh but you know we've been doing i actually have two podcasts that have been going strong uh especially the hallmarks podcast uh has been uh, has been doing great <laughs> through all this so that's awesome. been it's been a crazy crazy time to be a film critic slash podcaster and Richard, how's how has Critical Mass been going? Because I I know that that was something it that we were going to be starting up. <laughs> I, I just haven't done it. I should do it. I should totally do it. But it's hard to talk about stuff when you can't see very much. It, it's there's there's such a disconnect between the the two of this. And I remember when I was talking about starting the podcast, it it never was I thinking that it's only going to be virtual like this, like. I had the idea of having a garage being decked out and having somebody up in this room being like the engineer, like guy up in the sound booth thing. You still and could, then eventually. I don't like people in my house right now is the problem. <laughs> yeah. I would I'm rather, getting out of here. I, Good no God. way. But I, I do think that we still are able to talk about movies and talk about movies that honestly have been with us since the pandemic, which brings us to our uh new mutants news is this thing coming out we've always asked that question but let's <laughs> let's jump a little deeper into this because uh new mutants put out a new trailer that kind of teases that either it's going to have a big premiere at comic-con or that they're going to be releasing it earlier either way marvel's not really said that they're going to have a big presence at, at the comic-con this year and, and it's all virtual as well because of the pandemic but they still are, are showing a lot of footage in this and there's a possibility maybe it'll come out, but that's what we always hear. Um, I'll leave, I'll start this with Rachel. What do you think about New Mutants, um, the saga of the New Mutants? And it are they, are they again, just kind of giving us a hot dog at the end of a stick and just keep pulling it? 
Um, it's hard to say these days. I really felt like there was a lot of momentum in like the end of June and things were, and then I could, I was like, oh yeah, we're totally going to get it. And then like we had the spikes and now I feel like there's zero momentum. So, and, you know, it changes every, every day of what, uh, what we think is going to happen, but I, I don't know at this point, I, I, I kind of wonder if we're, if we're going to end up having, uh, with uh, movies, what we had with Broadway, where they canceled the whole year for Broadway. Uh, and uh, so I kind of wonder if that's going to happen for movies, but I hope not. And that would it's be so awful. Because like they, the reports have come out that they stand to lose like $43 billion this year or something to that extent. Richard, don't you see this going to VOD? Like if there's any Marvel anything or any superhero property that's in like the what's in our bank right now that we could put out to go to VOD and let people watch and maybe earn money on, this would problem, be it. The problem is, is that uh, Disney doesn't own the the streaming rights to the uh, X Men movies yet. Uh, that that's with the uh, they are they did just premiere Days of Future Past on Disney Plus, so they do have streaming that's true. rights. I, I don't think they have, and, the and I think that they mutants. can make. I think I think they can still make deals with Fox, like the people that did have the agreement, they could look at it still. A pandemic, anything's possible. Yeah, it's, it's, that's fair. I, But I think it would go to HBO Max as far as I understand. And mm. uh, and so I think that's probably why this particular property, again, from what I understand, can't just be dumped onto, onto Disney Plus. Yeah. Well, why tease it, Richard? It's more complicated than that. I, I think Rachel's point is a good one where where... I don't know if there's a whole lot of uh, excitement about it anymore because we've been teased with it for so long. I mean, I was I was into it, what, three years ago or whenever the yeah. hell it was supposed to come out. And now I'm kind of like, oh, I, don't, I don't care. Uh, and I still do kind of, but I'm just not, I, I'm not waiting with bated breath for it anymore, be, especially because, well, yeah, where is it going to go? Where am I going to see it? Is it going to be a little screen here? Is it going to be a big screen? And this is the kicker. We've waited so long and they keep dangling it that it had better be great. You know what I mean? Right. We've mm -hmm. waited this long and now they've built up this thing that it's finally going to come out. It can't just be okay. It's got to be really good for all this time we've waited. And that's I, kind of a dangerous place to be for them. I, think. I do think if they are wanting to sort of test out the market, maybe if it's in September or wherever, uh, that this New Moons makes way more sense than Mulan, that's for sure. But I, where do you see it going as far as Comic-Con is, is concerned, Chaz? Are they going to premiere like a lot of this? Maybe show like a 30 minute like segment or? No, they're gonna be like, here, you guys can watch it for free at Comic-Con. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you imagine you they're going to drop it? just happen to be on the live stream or something like that? Yeah, watch it be on the live stream, and then they're going to be like, wow. hey, now you guys have to hype it up even more of how good it was or how shitty it was. I think that would just be such a vulnerability to just put it up on a live stream and not have it be recorded. But after, well, I mean, like, after having it so, like what Richard was saying, like after having it be in development hell for like almost three years, like, mm. like what do they have to really lose on that, you know? It really like and, and to this point we already know the mutants are over so really what are they setting up with this what is the purpose of them even wanting to tease it if not to say we're going to give it to you soon maybe just to get some of their money back <laughs> exactly I mean, like, right they're just like, like look Rachel, please we'll give it to you we waited too long oh, like back. Was saying with oh, Mulan, fuck. i can't believe you've done this movie because people are very excited to see mulan and they're gonna see it but new mutants is like no, and and uh, I don't I don't know the budget off the top of my head. Do you? Well, I just feel like though yeah. with Mulan, like you need to save that to a point where people are going to be comfortable taking their kids to the to the movies. It's like, and it's was so much more expensive. So why not? You already this is already kind of a loss. So why not just this, if you're going to roll the <laughs> dice on a property, this seems like to make way more sense to me than a practically $300 million movie in Mulan. Well, that's the other thing. I really don't think Mulan would be much of a role uh, because I think, I think it has more of a built-in audience and people but, really want to see it. But you think yeah, though, if correct. they in say, say Labor Day weekend, they decide we're going to, we're, we're going to open, uh, the theaters will be open and we're going to release Mulan. You think that enough people feel comfortable 
uh, with everything that it would make money, it would be a success. Well, I think that depends that, on the region. Think, if they did global instead of instead I, of domestic, maybe. I think that <laughs> awful trolls movie just made record money because people wanted to see something at home. And they, there is a market for it, and, there is and a market sadly, home. Netflix now unfortunately has kind of a straight to DVD like kind of like it maybe they are making good films but they've made a lot of films that are subpar so now a lot of their like netflix original stuff seems like they're not going to be as up to snuff as like a Mm -hmm. theatrical release which is why they just recently purchased a property um which what was the film that was coming out this year it was an animated that they bought just now ah shoot Um, i gotta look that up they recently got well they're coming out with over the moon in the fall which i am so excited about uh, director Glenn Keane uh, is uh, his animated SpongeBob, Sponge oh. on the Run. So oh, they they bought out Netflix. Yeah, so Netflix acquired it the the rights to stream it. So even Netflix understands that the theatrical like I guess filmmaking process of wanting it to be on the biggest screen possible is different from their model, and they want it. Mm-hmm. I I think it's fascinating with what the studios are doing and. Honestly, how much are they losing day to day? Like by not um, even trying something yeah. with some of these. And, and the problem is- I just don't think Mulan really... is your movie to try. I think it's too, it was too expensive to make. See, and I think it's a sure fire. Mm. I could see like, it being a sure fire. I think it's gonna make money anyway, but-, but And we really problem... don't know. Like we don't know, Netflix withholds their streaming data. Like we don't know what like even, yeah. s- we don't know what streaming does. We don't know what the highest rated thing means in, in monetary gains. We don't understand that yet. But so maybe the, someone get... needs to pop that bubble. And Disney has the, I, I guess, the less lesser of the risk, maybe. Mm-hmm. Could be. But Rachel is, has a, like a huge family connection as, as well as I do with, with people who want to see movies with, with kids. You know, they're looking to bring kids to, to family movies. And I don't know if she's getting the same feedback I'm getting is that people are getting used to not bringing their kids to the theater. They're almost mm-hmm. like, well, it's a lot easier to buy a movie for 20 bucks and yeah. it, it's my whole household and I don't have to get it ready and drag them to the theater and buy a popcorn and, and they can stop and start it when the yeah. kid needs to go to the bathroom. Like they're starting to like it a little bit. And then you have the theaters who really made most of their money in the concessions that now no one is buying because they're not supposed to eat any of them. And they're terrified. Yeah, they're terrified well, to, to lift down to eat, of course. Yeah, but- I mean, I do think family films are the most vulnerable to the VOD market. That's why the, the that's what started the whole sort of battle between AMC and uh, in Universal with Trolls. And trolls uh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, because, yeah, it makes the most sense. Like, you, it's the most, uh, if, you're, if you're thinking, if I'm a single person, and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know, I've spent 20 bucks to rent a movie. It's it's a little bit harder of a sell versus uh, if, I, if I'm if i looking for something for my kids for, uh, you know, that I would have already, sp- I would have spent way more than $20. So like it, it just financially kind of makes more sense. Plus, if you are watching a movie at home with your kids, it's it's a preferable experience where it's not uh, because most of the time when you're single, you want to go to the movies as a social experience. You like, you were less inclined with kids to go to the movies as a social experience. (laughs) I I hope people don't go to the theaters for a social experience. You go to sit and watch your movie and then enjoy yourself. That's it. (laughs) The theatrical experience. That's, that's my kind of theater Alamo style. But it's also a moot point with New Mutants because it's not really kid friendly. Like I don't see them going for a Trolls no. two level right. little buyout with it. I really think it's it's what you're saying, no. Rachel. There's a little bit of rights tied up, and perhaps this big push with the new trailer is something saying that they had reached a deal to where look, this has been on the shelf for years. It's time to put this out. I don't care if it's streaming. We just want to try to make some of our money back. Maybe yeah. that's the idea. Maybe what, I I I could see it. I it just seems like less of a risk to me than Mulan. So what are you gonna say, Chaz? I was gonna say let's make a betting pool of like what streaming service it's gonna like they're gonna announce it being on, or if it's gambling. Be Catch me outside. How about that? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Hey, um, the report- <laughs> I got bottle caps, dude. Fall out. <laughs> <laughs> the well, report- I don't- budget for New Mutants is somewhere in the area of two hundred million. 
Are you serious? <laughs> now, now they're not sure, but that is I yeah. Well, I mean, and they've had that's a bad idea. <laughs> I'm just letting it go. Holy cow. It's long. It's insane. Well, they had several marketing <laughs> pushes too that were exp expensive. And it's probably with some of the production issues too, you know, and all that. But mm. uh all apparently the reshoots it, it costs stuff. It costs in the area what Dark Phoenix made uh, uh, mm. cost to make, which was about two hundred million. So that I guess we'll crazy. see. That's that a whole lot of money. Is that yeah. is a lot. Reshoots though. Uh, again, that might include some reshoots. But, who knows yeah. what? Well, but sure. Richard, what what would you think of if I were put it to this into like car terms? Say like we got an old bug that we just inherited, and it's just like it's already a money pit. And you know, look. anything we throw at it, it's gonna sink. But it, it at least starts. But now we need to use the car because it's the only car that runs because everything else is still being built. Like, do you ride the, the bug and, and sink it a little because the cost is, I don't yeah. know. It, I mean, it's, it's less of a risk in a way because I feel like this is already kind of a loss they know to begin with. Whereas like other movies have, have sort of more potential. So why not just use this one as the testing and it's mm. testing the waters to see yeah. what happens kind well, of we will, we will find out well, when, uh, i'm curious why they hits. don't maybe uh test it with us rachel to a certain extent like let a yeah. couple of critics see it and maybe get some positive buzz <laughs> oh, out there you know <laughs> but that's <laughs> the problem what <laughs> <if> <laughs> there's, there's like, no oh, way they would do that sucks. this is another dark phoenix and we know it like i don't know yeah that you, you message this dark email site and it's on the dark web and they're like oh you want to see the Mew Mute? Hmm. We have a we have a file somewhere. You don't know if we're gonna use it or. And, and then they just give you like some mailed like tongue or something. I don't know. What do you guys think is gonna happen with New Mutants? What do you think is the Comic Con presentation that they're gonna do? Leave a comment down below. Let us know. And let's move into the next bit of news, which apparently Uncharted is still going on, and it's happening with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. Apparently Tom Holland is on set um, and this has been a 13 year uh, venture to try to make this film. And now they, they finally have, I guess, some footing in the pandemic to, to be able to figure out how to get production started on it. Uh, start with you, Richard. What do you think of the Uncharted games? Have you played any of them? And, and what are you thinking about at this film that we've all honestly in this sphere heard about for a very long time? I, I, am, I am probably the last person to talk about this. I'm not a gamer at all. All right, cut to Chaz. What about you, Chaz? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Tom Holland, it's Mark Wahlberg. It's going to be kind of an Indiana Jones feel. What, what do you think about a new adventure of that realm? Yeah, I mean, it's... I'll put it this way. Um, as a prequel to other things, it, it, has, it obviously has some name recognition. People are excited about it. Those stars have their own followers. You know, like, oh, I'll see anything with Tom Holland in it or whatever. I mean, so... It's got all that going for it, which is great, but it doesn't, like, I'm not excited about it, not only because I'm not much of a gamer, but also because there are hardly any really good movies made off of that kind of property. So gotcha. um, it's, for me, it's an uphill battle and I'll just kind of wait and see. And I'll, it's one of those movies that, for instance, Rachel, you might relate to this. I'm just going to see it because they're telling me to see it. Yeah. I probably would not go to see it on my own if I were not a critic. Well, Chaz, have you played the game? What do you think of, of this uh, this concept? Um, I think 13 years is a long ass time to try to develop, <laughs> develop this. Um, I haven't good. played the games. I have not played the games. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, and I have a PS4, so I feel like that's very blasphemous to admit. But um, when I think of video game movies, I think of Far Cry which is god awful and that director was Yule Bull or whatever his name is um it's just I don't know I think the last decent movie that we have that's based off a of video game is probably Tomb Raider not not Angelina Jolie's but like I mean, the, the most recent one and even it's that tender. yeah and that one that one suffered from a lot of issues but like for being based off a of video game it's neat but like also like I don't know exactly how I feel about Mark Wahlberg being cast in the role that yeah. he's being cast in. Yeah. Isn't, yeah. So, um, I don't know. It's like, it's about time they got lifted off after all these rumors, but mm. 
uh, I don't know. Watch it have the new mutant vibe where it keeps getting delayed. <laughs> well, do you think with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, there's any potential for this being a better quality video game adaptation? The only oh, thing I'm excited about is Antonio Banderas because he's my man crush. Mm. But that's about it. Yeah, that's fair because I think with Mark Wahlberg and Tom Holland, we know them at like on screen personas is like really witty and just like humor based, you know, with like one liners. And if that's the route they're going to take, you can already know this This is going to appeal more to the teenagers than it is going to be taken as a serious film. So I don't necessarily think that's my ballpark. But I mean, like, like Richard said and like uh, Rachel said, like, I'll see it if, you know, just because. Oh, by, by the way, was it you, uh, Patrick, or was it Rachel? What you, get your finger made... out of my face. What are you doing? <laughs> was it you who made the young sound when I said Antonio Redders? Or was I Rachel? Oh, no, wait, we were making fun it. of Antonio I mean, Banderas. Come on, Antonio you know, Banderas. We made He's fun Zorro. of Banderas. I heard a mm, but I didn't know where it came from. That's all. Mm-hmm. Here, is there any? Yeah, it was from me. Uh, so yeah, so this and movie. His name is John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd hope that they, after thirteen years, would have the script pretty good. That, that you would hope that they <laughs> work on that. And uh, I'm not a video game person at all. But I know that Sony is really desperate for an IP that really sticks and takes off. I think they're really hoping this will be a big hit for them. Uh, they, uh, you know, they they have Tom Holland, who's a big name, uh, and I, I don't know. It seems like it's been hard lately for uh, new uh, franchises to take off, aside from maybe Jumanji. Uh, that uh, that have you know fallen flat a lot of attempts even things like the 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 monster movies haven't uh, they got like Godzilla dark universe. and those they have they haven't done oh, as the well. dark universe Ooh, where yeah. did that go <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, and so I don't know I I think that I can see why they're hopeful and if it's fun <laughs> i i look forward to it but um but yeah i i uh i uh do you think they're just holding spider-man 3 script to gunpoint and it's like you're gonna do this movie tom holland get in the chair <laughs> um i i i will say though as like being like because i i like sony games and like i recently finished the last of us part two and uh hbo is trying to make the last of us into a tv series um speaking of ip that they're trying to get a hold on to but i feel like that's gonna be more groundbreaking because i think the thing with video game movies based off of video games is that like the games are so long you get so attached to the characters and like these movies don't offer a lot of that because like so well, much story-based like, games because it's a different story between sonic and and like pokemon right, right. And... okay yeah. but i mean i mean like uncharted is definitely in the realms of like you get to know the character i mean like they just came up the fourth one like a couple years ago so like he has his own following for that but I feel like maybe like do they have to make a movie out of it? Like why can they not go the TV series approach and actually dive deep into it, kind of like what The Last of Us is doing? Interesting. Well, that could be the better approach given the situation that we're in now, where TV content is has already kind of shifted more into a, a movie sphere with the terrific writing and filmmaking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now we have to be at our house, so like that's the format that most people are going to stick with anyway. Especially with how The Mandalorian was able to change like the game with their visual effects, which Mm -hmm. is my segue into the next uh, topic where Hayden Christensen Mm -hmm. might actually be in a Star Wars Disney Plus show. I am excited for this, people. You know why? Because he didn't get the best director, uh, an actor's director in George Lucas. And he could have used it I think he's got a chance for redemption in this. I think Obi, I think, I think Ewan McGregor, everyone in those films could have used a little more like, maybe not as faster and more intense and more of let's talk about your character situations. Oh, sure. <laughs> but um, you know what, hey, um, Christensen, what do you hey, think about it? Well, he gets, a, he catches a lot of flack for, for, you know, his role, but I think he was doing the best he could with the script. And again, George Lucas is not an actor. Director. Y'all were looking at me like I shot him. I didn't just, <laughs> I didn't do anything but bad. I'm just I saying. Say this. I think Hayden Christensen is, is a really good, like watch, check out the movie glass for instance he's really good in it so if he's given some good script and and you know maybe a director that cares more about character development than special effects it might be a very cool thing 
Well, and what's cool about it is it's going to be Hayden Christensen, not like him in the Darth Vader suit. So I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of patchwork to maybe improve the prequel films, like what the Clone Wars did, where you see a different side of, of Anakin, maybe more towards what the animated version was, and you get more stuff with Obi-Wan and him, more flashbacks. What do you think? I, I think he that? still might hate sand. Hate sand. This is the one, I mean, the whole episode just called sand. <laughs> do I think that he could have a talented, uh, could he could give a, a talented performance? Yes, it's possible. He has given them in the past. Am I in that camp that's like, well, the prequels, I've revisited them and I've, they're actually good. I, no, I'm <laughs> not in that camp. <laughs> if, you, that camp. if you want to look at it that way, you can. Just, it's just sure. It's you can just, like whatever you want to like. That is a perspective. Like. But just because, <laughs> just because the sequel trilogy was disappointing does not mean that they're by the prequel movies are good. That's not how it works. There, lots of things can be bad at the same time. No, and, it's the rule. Once the next trilogy comes out, you diss, <laughs> you diss that one hardest, and then you start saying, "Oh, but we really liked the Last Jedi. It was actually good. Yeah, it was the, good. No, it, <laughs> it was, was good. Yeah, yeah. The the." <laughs> The sequel trilogy was hit and miss uh, for me, um, but overall disappointing. And the prequels were just very disappointing for me. And uh, just, I don't think that, I don't think his performance was good. I think that, I, I think he was extremely wooden in the role and him and Natalie Portman had no chemistry at all. So are you asking, am well, I they excited were to dating see him when return? Five -year -old boy. What's that? <laughs> start dating when he was an eight year old boy. Oh, come on. Who she, groomed, she groomed a little boy into, <laughs> into marrying her. But it's not like, because I think that uh, that uh, Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver had amazing chemistry in yeah. uh, in the uh, sequel trilogy, but yeah, the script wasn't the best. Uh, so, it's, so it's a different situation than in the prequel where uh, the script also wasn't the best, but their chemistry was not great. Anakin, well, you're breaking this, my heart. We know that Obi-Wan and Anakin, like I'm saying their character's names, their chemistry is good. Even throughout the prequels, they had good chemistry. You could see the brotherly love. And Deborah Chow, who I believe was scripted to be writing this Obi-Wan spinoff, which is what he's rumored to be appearing in, she made one of the stronger, uh, a couple of the stronger Mandalorian episodes. Yeah. So I can see them going with, with more character-driven stuff with this but no. do you see this being like a a darth vader like reprise where we were bringing him into no! kind of a rogue one like a new hope level <laughs> while Just, also going they, back to like anakin the, i'm not sure the article that you sent says the prequels have been reevaluated in a much more positive light and star wars fans have but now forgiven christensen and would be interested in him returning to the franchise i would agree I, with that I am I would agree not with in that. that camp at all. But, I, but here's I, the thing. Can you forgive someone who's not harmed you at all and has just been an actor I mean, in a film? Like, <laughs> yeah. there's there comes to the point where it's like, we have to stop thinking like that. That's what happened with Kelly Marie Tran. And and it's, it's, it's toxic. And I think I, with Celebration, we welcomed him back. Like, everybody mm -hmm. loved when Hayden Christensen came back. I, have I don't know. Given him as a person, but if you're talking about the character <laughs> and his performance <laughs> yeah. in film, then I know it is not. It is not all of a sudden become a good performance. It is not all of a sudden become a good film. And but you can't blame the film solely on his performance. Is what I, I'm well, saying. I don't even blame the, his performance solely on him. I mean, again, when you have that kind of script, that's and, missing uh, the Jar Jar in the room. <laughs> and, and Lucas, who couldn't direct his way out of paper bag, I think it's really when you can't get, if you can't get a performance out of Natalie Portman, something is wrong. <laughs> and and Liam Neeson and Ewan McGregor and yeah. every opportunity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wonderful so, actors all around. And, uh, but so the prequels, to... in my mind, have not been reevaluated in a more positive light. And I, I still think I always the enjoyed them as a kid, terrible. and I know their flaws, and I accept their flaws. Yeah. Kaz, what were you gonna say? Well, I, I think like is this supposed to be like after the prequels then? Like Possibly. after he's they're, they're pre prequels. Well, I I always envisioned it being kind of like a you gotta make sure Baby Luke isn't getting hunted down by Vader or Dude, making sure I mean, that if, if that we see Vader, there. if we see Vader in action like we saw him in Rogue One or like in like this the Fallen Jedi video game or whatever, like I mean that'd be pretty intense and terrifying. But 
if it's maybe in a gonna... nightmare sequence, but I don't want to see him and Obi Wan interact until A New Hope. I think, I think that makes that interaction less impactful. How, it's how like, mad oh, but would they you they already be if they re- talked to each other again? How mad would you be if they recreated that scene to tie it in? If they just had a CGI and then they they totally <laughs> made it like CGI Yoda lightsaber battle. Yeah. I yeah, I want to see Obi Wan like jump I don't around think that will happen. Because <laughs> you know that whole fight, he's just like this. Yeah. Too yeah, old and he was guys. fantastic. Have you seen the video where they recut it and and do like some stunt work? Yes. Yeah. Some people on YouTube did that. It, it's possible, and that did not look too bad. So hey, it's possible. I, I mean, think it's going to be more had, flashbacks. They have had novels uh, in between uh, Revenge of the Sith and. Uh, and um, New Hope, uh, like there's um, Lords of the Sith. It's all about Vader and the Emperor. Uh, so they have done some canon storytelling in that period. I mean, obviously there's Rogue One as well, but um, so there's story there that they could kind of build off of. But uh, but I don't know. I just at this point I just don't trust Lucasfilm. I, I haven't really liked uh, except except for Star Wars Rebels. You didn't like I Mandalorian. Loved Rebels I, I, and Mandalorian. I I haven't really liked anything that they've done since Force Awakens as far as films. Um, mm. So they've been just a even Rogue disappointment One? after another. No Rogue One love. Nothing. No, I'm not a fan of Rogue One. Oh no, I, me neither. I, I don't like Rogue I One didn't either. Like it. I I I did give a positive review to. Uh, um, uh, the Rise oh, of Skywalker, just barely, because I thought it was a kind of a, an entertaining oh, mess. Listen to me! <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have said we're something not, worse. We're not <laughs> that, yeah. No, I thought it was an entertaining mess, but uh, but yeah, it, it, as a trilogy, and even the spinoffs have been disappointing, and mm. I don't know, I just don't think that they have some like solid leadership with ideas aside from the animated properties with Dave Filoni, uh, I feel like he kind of knows what what uh, his type of storytelling he's doing and has a firm handle on things with those mm-hmm. animated uh, properties. But other, everything else just feels like we're just flinging stuff at the wall. We're hoping something works. We're, we're tossing out directors right and left, tossing out ideas. Uh, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that this Obi Wan series was was like going to film, and then all of a sudden it, it's it's canceled and well, stopped. postponed due and, to writing differences. You and McGregor yeah, didn't like I the mean, script from just, what they were saying. There's a new thing like that every day, and and not even uh, you know considering pandemic uh, conflict and all this kind of stuff. But even before that, it was just like every day there was some kind of Star Wars news about, oh, so-and-so directors changes. And I don't know, I just feel like it's a mess. And I just don't, I I don't trust the storytelling there that they Mm. have a handle on, on, uh, on a- I think they've got a shot with this. I think Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni have both proven with The Mandalorian that they've got storytelling chops that they're they're going the same route that george lucas had envisioned with the original trilogy and and for better or worse star wars is always star wars like you can never take away that that feel even in the smallest points sure they have to explain who solo's last name is and what that means but you'll also get to see a wookiee and wookiees are inherently cute and awesome to look at except for the except for the chewy was gonna eat people in solo what was that uh, he ate porgs he ate all kinds of stuff in return porgs of the jedi one thing that's like in return animal. of the jedi he got people all caught up in stuff for going after bear hide i didn't i didn't need he's to always see. been a monster i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> what? but I, mean, I do think basically this i had to kind of come to the realization that like star wars has let me down almost my entire life <laughs> yep no. maybe i'm not a fan i like I, yeah. that i thought i was I love Rachel, those any, three Rachel, movies. Rachel, any time a Star Wars comes out. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I just... On I mean, I was so disappointed in Phantom Menace when I was 18. So excited. Super pumped. And then I didn't like them. Didn't like the prequels. I And then I was loved Force Awakens. And then they've just considered let me down almost every time uh and uh i don't know so it's it's uh it's just been a disappointing franchise 
Well, someone else leave us on a more positive note about the franchise. <laughs> um, I'm excited for it. I think I it'll be Rebels. good. I'm excited for it too. What do you think, Rich? Is there going to be any more with, are we going to see like a screenshot of him holding a lightsaber in some closet and they're like, whoa, he's back. Of course they are because the lightsaber battles are the best part of any Star Wars yeah, film. I would love to see yeah. more training and stuff. That's yeah, it. I think Rachel, you you might have had a lot of a lot of um, residual. My heart has been broken so many times and, by Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there there's a lot of hurt there, but there can be a lot of redemption if something goes right. And I think there's a chance with this. So what do you Rachel, guys think about can, it? They can change. They can be the Star <laughs> Wars you want them to be. Just give them a chance. Yeah. We need you to hope again. <laughs> no, um, what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below and let's move on to our viewer question of the day, which is uh, kind of where I wanted to lead into the, the big topic and then we'll close out for the day. Who belongs in the Hall of Fame of Directors? Now, I, I posed this question to everybody this morning. I've been making a list in the back. And here. yeah, I've been seeing that we've had some lists. I, I bring this up mainly because I know that with the new crop of directors that have come out in the past decade, Denis Villeneuve, um uh, yeah. edgar wright uh, people that that have been the forefront of like more more better uh, different styles of filmmaking that that have revolutionized where we're going there's a lot on that could be here but i wanted to pass off first to Chaz. you're typing a list and i'm stopping you from typing <laughs> i see you live typing your list on the dock can't do that let's hear what you got <laughs> That's uh, my like, list. You're, you're <laughs> typing in my list. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll just say what I wrote. Um, Denny Villeneuve, for sure. I, I think he made a lot of solid films during the 2010s alone. Um, he kind of made a mark for himself and kind of came out of nowhere where like in his films are being studied still for like the style and for like his work with characters. Like that's his main focus, like how he is able to, uh, really highlight character like these complicated characters and like these dark films um and they're not necessarily dark i mean like i mean yeah they are dark but like yeah they are <laughs> yeah. but i mean like I gonna say it's prisoners like, is a not dark film well it's like <laughs> it's more of like a character study though too of like how far you know like humans can go and like it's just like i don't know like, even like his more artistic approach like enemy like it's still it's such like a subtle thing i don't know he comes first in my mind, and like also I have a tattoo in reference to one of his movies, so I'm kind of biased. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think we'll go down the list. Yeah. So, Richard, who do you have for a pick? He's, uh, well, Denis is on my list as well, so I will just skip him because for, for all the same <laughs> reasons Chad just, uh, and Chad just said. In fact, the first movie where I kind of took notice of him was, was Prisoners, and I went, oh my gosh, where did this guy come from? It was so good. But I kind of have like a, like my classic favorites and then the new guys. Like, I do love Spielberg, but that's because I kind of grew up with a lot of his movies, you know, Jaws and E.T. and all that. But he's done a lot of kind of pop stuff. And then he'll swing back and do a, a Private Ryan or, or a Schindler's List. And then he'll swing and do this other kind of thing. So he's a little iffy. But if we're talking about newer directors, uh, I really enjoy, well, I don't know how new, but I really enjoy Darren Aronofsky. I know he's iffy, and as well as Fincher. But as far as newer ones, um, I, oh, here's my list. I would have to go with, and you're gonna laugh because you think I'm just gonna be saying this to uh, like, you know, get some, uh, get some love. Uh, Greta Gerwig. Oh, nice. That is mm -hmm. a good pick. Mm -hmm. Because I was looking at some Sofia Coppola stuff, and I don't, I don't think she's really all that awesome. I think it's her name that gets attention. Mm -hmm. But Greta is like developing. You can see each movie just gets richer and better with her choices and things. And so uh, she'll be interesting to watch coming up. Mm. Rachel, what are, what are some of the choices that you have? Uh, so, yeah. So obviously you got to have Hitchcock in this Hall of Fame uh the great th you know thrillers uh you gotta have uh, uh i think hayao miyazaki uh for his wonderful uh, anime films uh and people never think of animation animated directors in the in terms of great directors but it actually i think there's a case to be made that they're even harder because you have to be coordinating all these different elements for for years uh, as opposed to you know this the shorter shoots of a live action film 
Uh, but anyway, I would definitely put him on there. I, I think Akira Kurosawa, you got to put on in a director's hall of fame. Uh, Christopher Nolan has to make a place. <laughs> uh, Cecil DeMille, I think you got to have him on there. Uh, <laughs> Wes Anderson, I think. Uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, Robert Zemeckis, Richard Linklater, and Ang Lee. I think all. Very nice. I want to give some list. love to Rian Johnson. Mm. Well, I was actually, I was, I've been waiting for someone to put in Ryan Coogler because he's yeah. really been like from Fruitvale Station on up, like every film, oh. maybe Black Panther's a little more commercial and not like pushing oh. the bounds, but it pushes nominated every for boundary, boundary when it comes to like, you know, representation and yeah. Yeah, being able to include people in that. Um, yeah, I, I think that soon we're going to start compiling a, a rather large list of creators now that there's so many more formats to be putting out content and stuff is there any that have come out in the past decade that stand out uh aside I think from you music? gotta have bong joon ho yes, there you bong go Joon-ho, yeah um i would also like to have like maybe robert uh eggers um uh, who's a horror mm-hmm. director you know for the lighthouse and for the witch um just because he definitely has a style and like he's <laughs> kind of changed <laughs> kind of changed the horror style um i think christopher mccory is on there for his action-packed Stuff means more commercialized mm-hmm. for sure, but I mean the level of intensity brings like the mainstream stuff is kind of entertaining, and even Chad Stileski for like John Wick. I mean, it's just elevating action sequences, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and you know, I, I was actually David- thinking between that, I was going to give it more to Gareth Evans for directing The Raid and The Raid Two, mm-hmm. because yeah, that's Evans, that's where you get John Wick from when you think about it. Really, like a, a lot of the action, the close-up fighting, it, like The Raid Redemption is insane yeah, when yeah. it comes to that mm-hmm. stuff. That's very true. I think that for an indie choice, uh, uh, David Lowry would be on my list. I I loved his Beach Dragon and I uh, Ghost Story and and uh, we'll see his Peter Pan coming up. I, but I think he's been really strong uh, so far and in his movies. I also uh, think if you're talking about maybe an underrated director, I really loved Nora Ephron's movies that she made. Hey. Uh, I. I love uh, it's Lewis in Seattle and you've got mail and, and uh, kind of movies that are just sort of discounted as easy to make, but they are not. And uh, they were really effective. She's such a great writer. So she gets more, more credit for that. But um, I also, I also want to add Alex Garland to the list. Mm. Or touch of sci-fi. No, that's yeah. very good too. What are your guys' picks? I think we've, I don't know how many we've just listed off. We <laughs> listed off a lot of people. <laughs> At least 30 there. Have so we missed that. any of them, all of them? Leave a comment down below. I want to thank both of my guests for joining me. Rachel, uh, Rachel's Reviews and the Hallmark Channel. Please tell people where they can find you and what you're up to. Yeah, so you can find me at Rachel's Reviews all over social media and iTunes and YouTube. I do weekly family movie night uh, picks. Uh, I'm just coming up on my 250th family movie night pick every monday so if you if you want to figure out some good stuff to watch with your family check out the channel also i have the hallmarkies podcast which we cover all the hallmark uh, related content they just announced this week they are going to supposedly somehow do 40 movies again this this holiday season (laughs) which i don't know how they're going to pull that off i'm very skeptical but nevertheless there's still going to be a lot for us to cover on the hallmarkies podcast in two scripts it's going to be amazing (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, we have a ton of fun we cover all the uh the we basically cover all rom-coms and holiday films whether it's particularly on the homework channel or not and so we've been covering christmas in july uh on the podcast and we've been having a ton of fun we have weekly interviews with talent uh, all different kinds of talent uh and we just have a great time so it's uh it's a I, my goal is to make it a show that anybody would have a fun time listening to, even if you're not into Hallmark movies. Uh, Very but, cool. Uh, anyway, so Very it's great. Cool. Thank you again for coming on. And Richard, yeah. tell people where they can find you. Uh, Critical Mass, Fox 13. You're you're everywhere, man. No, I feel like you're hurrying <laughs> us off, and I didn't get this announcement thing from Chad yet that I was. <laughs> oh, he never even. Yeah, where were you with that? <laughs> you didn't even you know you didn't put out shit. What are you doing? <laughs> I I think it's a Nolan thing. Yeah, opinion. it okay, seems so like it. You know what okay. I'm going to do instead? Here's what I'm going to do. Chaz, I'm going to save you from this one. And Rich, I'm going to, I mean, I, this was going to be an announcement afterwards, but I oh, got to bring it up now. What's going on? We're going to announce the next episode of Pitch Slap. And 
I am inviting both of you to join on to the yeah. next uh, episode where we are going to be doing our pitch for what the next Indiana Jones film should look like. Mm. So we're going to cast it. We're going to give it a director and we're going to give it a plot and the best person will win based on the arguments and uh, my opinion. Because I'm so you don't goes. even have any idea how excited I, I absolutely love doing pitches. It's like my very favorite cool. thing. So I'm well, last, last episode, the first episode we did Batman Beyond, which was really fun. Chaz was a, was a competitor on it. I Unfortunately, won. he got kicked out, so he can't be <laughs> in the next round. But you two and we got to find a third person in there. We've got it. We've got a roster of people. Patrick, in. Patrick, let's switch it around. Let's make you be a part of that pitch. And then I get to be the, the judge on that. I don't want to be in this. <laughs> I don't want to be in this. I'll send the pitches a week later when I've when I've been bored and and finally came up with something. <laughs> but yeah, that I'm should be excited. the next thing that's coming out in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Hey, and Richard, what are not... we win? What you said? We were the winner. What are we win? What are you winning? If you oh, you just put you get put onto the roster and we're going into the into a tournament, I guess. Oh, and so what are you gonna... win in the tournament? I don't know yet. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of time before then, Rich. I'm going to work on it, okay? <laughs> All right. I expect prizes is what I'm saying. All right. You'll get a prize. I want a prize. Even if you lose, well, I'll send you something. I don't want a participation. <laughs> oh, oh, I just thought of another director, Frank Capra. Ooh, him... that is a good one. Yeah. Got to have him on there. Well, Chaz, where can the people find you? I just saw you put out a new over and under episode. Um, yeah, I'm the over and under artist exposed. Um, put a new one out with Carly. Uh, I I'm sure, I'm, uh, yeah, just yeah. Yeah, oh boy. I, I shouldn't have thrown you. Whoops. No, no, no. It's because I, I usually I usually uh, give her shit because her last name is Italian, so I usually I usually pronounce like Big Nanny, but it's, I, I think it's like Bagani or something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> I like totally got funk twisted on that. Um, and then you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram. Um, can I tell Richard this is the last news? Do it. Okay. This is the Easter egg of this, the episode. This, okay, this this actually ties into what we talked about too with um, movies being pushed back and stuff. Because as we all know, uh, other countries have a better handle on this pandemic better Why's than that? the United uh, States. Total other podcast. Um, but I think the big marketing for Warner Brothers for Tenet was uh china right and that's gonna be you mean, a huge you mean christopher nolan's tenant yeah christopher nolan's tenant huh. but here's the thing here's the downfall uh christopher china, nolan you mean china says it's a run it's runtime is too long to play <laughs> and the so, soundtrack's too loud and no one can hear what they're saying <laughs> so I, I i wonder if uh, <laughs> next year <laughs> will that be the stake in its heart that's what i'm asking do you uh, Christopher Nolan uh, is notorious for like not wanting to make changes for instance when the theaters were having trouble with how it was mixed and he's like no that's exactly how it's supposed to be I don't want anyone to hear the dialogue um <laughs> I doubt he's gonna make a check I doubt he's gonna go okay I'm, I'll make a shorter version for China I mean do you think he would do that I don't no way but no. doesn't China okay doesn't try to edit films out anyway like can they not edit themselves yeah they do Probably not in a theatrical release unless they get caught, but I'm, I'm sure bootlegs and stuff exist. Mm. I don't, well, I don't know. That. Their government does have some, I think, censorship things that they do, but um, uh, and they're very picky. Even before the pandemic, they're picky about there's only so many movies that were allowed into China every year, and uh, and so yeah, they. Uh, um, they like they don't allow anything with ghosts or spirits i know that there's all <laughs> kinds of weird rules yeah. in china <laughs> there goes like half the horror films <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah, the ghostbusters couldn't go in there remember it's that definitely not a definitely not a good thing if that's what they were hoping you know at least we could do it in china yeah yeah so i wonder if that's gonna be a stake in the heart and like they just ultimately pull it back like but, push it back instead of doing it like because right now they've been doing it like weekly and then they pushed it back like a month but right. now i'm just like like kind of like with your job richard like how you keep they keep playing like a month out you know yeah. i wonder if they're going to put this out until like october i think what they're running into is they don't want to go head to head with dune because that's two movies they want to make money off of so i don't know i wonder if they're gonna push dune back and replace that with with tenant you know 
And I would be, I mean, if I'm Christopher Nolan, I, I would be like, okay, they're either not going to show it in China or they're going to cut it up themselves or I get to make a shorter version of it. And now there's another version out there that I can sell twice. Oh, and then no. I'll be a director's version. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know, what's what's the what's the way for me to, to, to push this movie in an age where hardly anyone's going to theaters? So I don't know. That is the I mean, question. Most that places question. don't even have the, it's not like, I mean, here in Utah, we're lucky to have a bunch of theaters open. That's pretty rare. I certainly, California <laughs> has nothing open right now. Uh, so they don't even have the options. It's not even people going and most people don't even have the option to go if they wanted to. And so do you, like I said, I thought, I felt like there was a really good chance that it was going to happen at the end of June, but then with the ups, with the uptick and now everything's just more closed down or practically, I feel like almost in, in March levels. I, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know. A, as far as the quarantine levels is what I'm saying. And I, so now I'm very skeptical. So I think that it will be delayed. And I yeah, think Tenet is probably sad. one of those movies, kind of like Mulan, where a lot of people are interested in seeing it. <coughs> Not me. But a lot of people are interested <laughs> in seeing it. They could probably push it off and people would only, that would only whet their appetite to, to you know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're going to push it off enough that, that it can be shown full in a theater and then people will be dying to see it. Yeah. Not dead. No, not dying. Eager yeah. to see it. Yeah. Eager. Yeah. That's what I meant. Choice of words. <laughs> Oof. Oof. I want to thank my guests today for coming on the show. No. Um, uh, that Hey, did that work out, Chaz? Did you get him? Were, were you surprised? He, he answered that serious. That? He answered that seriously while holding a Daredevil action figure. So I think I would get my action figure to make sure that I was also <laughs> handling this as professionally as possible like, yeah. 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 only thing i have it within uh, i have the only thing i have within grass i have a it's <laughs> everybody's looking within arm's reach what can i grab <laughs> i have weight stuff I have right here i could grab the last I this is incredible nice. oh that's a good one Oh, hand sanitizer <laughs> that's a weird <laughs> thing to have right next to your desk Chaz. <laughs> not that in this day and age i don't oh, know when you have a lizard in the same room as you so <laughs> Well, there you go. Please make sure to check out the podcast and like and follow and do all of that stuff. I want to again thank my guests and thank you guys for watching and we will see you.